first, we should get into your guys' musical background because I feel like both of you have done a lot and it's very interesting to, to know how you got to, how, how the Volt became. How so, Volt Corey, became. you first, because you were not, you know, you've been in bands. What, what was what's it been like? Um, are we talking like way back or are we just talking? Well, what, let's whatever, talk about whatever when... Whatever is significant. Let's talk about when you and I met. So, oh, yeah. yeah, so... It was 1979. No. Yeah. <laughs> I knew. I was wondering how long it was going to take to get in this interview to name drop Sean Erickson. But it's within the first minute. It's like the first 30 seconds. But we know, we know each other because of a guy named Sean that I knew from Windsor, <laughs> where I grew up. And uh, yeah, so he was a guitar player and he played in a band called Top Shelf with Carter. Mm -hmm. And he was leaving the band and he asked me to replace him. So I auditioned for the band and... Yeah, and that's and I guess yeah. the first time that me and you met was at the Phoenix Theater in Petaluma. Oh, that's true. I, I, I went to go watch them play. But I oh, the good old Phoenix. Yeah. But I yeah. don't really <laughs> remember it. No, no. To be honest, and how do you how do you know I, the I Sean know character? I don't know. Sean, uh, how did we meet Sean? Sean was the guitar player in Top Shelf, and he, I think, maybe answered like a MySpace ad for our band that's so when cool. we were forming. Yeah. I think that's how he came about. Yeah. And he auditioned for Top Shelf and then um, he like joined like quickly after that and he was in the band for like a couple years and then he wanted to leave to do some other stuff and he recommended Corey and then we had both of them for a little bit together while Corey learned the ropes. Yep. And then well, then we went And on you tour. were singing. I was yep. singing, yeah. You were on guitar. Yeah. Corey was on guitar. Yeah. And yeah. then you guys just started doing some other stuff, some shows, just you two. That, uh, that yeah, was that way was, later, way later. Yeah. Because I, long yeah. after, I played yeah, on we, Top Shelf for years, and then I played with a different band called Mystic Roots. And so, I mean, I don't, it was like probably seven years after I started playing with Top Shelf that we did solo acoustic shows? Probably. I think we went on tour in Japan and South Korea in 2012. Um, and Sheesh. that was like... Japan and South Korea, super that cash. Was the, yeah. Super cash, like that has nothing. Yeah, back yeah, in Japan. Just, yeah, uh, yeah. When we went to <laughs> Tokyo, and uh, no, but I think that was kind of like the last last chapter of Top Shelf, and so mm -hmm. it probably was around 2013 or 14 that you and I started doing some like acoustic shows ourselves. Yeah, and we started out by doing covers. Um, we did the, our first acoustic show together was uh, all like Bob Marley and Sublime covers. Yeah. Because top, yeah, top Shelf was, was a reggae, dope. well, it was more rock. Rock guess, reggae band. Rock yeah. reggae. Dope. And um, yeah. so at that time, we were playing a lot more reggae. So yeah, those first shows we did were just kind of, you know, I had this crappy little loop pedal, so we would just, I would just loop these. Reggae. Yeah, and that the was loop, the beginning. The loop yeah. talent is ridiculous. That was the... <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's great, dude, to see him do his thing. But that was the beginning of that. Like, we were like, oh, let's just get together. Like, Corey and I always really clicked, I think, from the beginning of us, like, writing songs together and, like, being in a band together. Like, it was apparent that him and I were on the same level in terms of, like, musicality and, and like, where we, what we wanted, the songs that we wanted to write. And so when Top Shelf started, stopped doing so much, it was, like, there was no doubt that, like, Corey and I were going to continue doing something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so these acoustic shows were just the beginning of that and, like, not knowing what we wanted to do really, but, like, oh, yeah, we should play still because you have a guitar and I have a voice and, like, we want to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's where we were, like came up with the idea to start looping like stuff and start right. playing shows, acoustic things. Yeah, that way. I mean, I went to those shows and I really enjoyed them, even even if it was just covers. But then, like, you hear you guys' original stuff on this album, and it's like you can tell you guys work together really well because mm -hmm. just the creativity and originality of all the songs is insane. So, how about we start talking about that? Okay. Okay. Um, so, what was the first song that came of this album? Like, what was the first it's song obsession, you guys did? Right? Uh, it's the first one we started working on. You think so? I thought I thought it was gone. <laughs> no. Well, so what happened was we played a few of those of those shows together, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then we started writing. Yep. And well, we we had we decided would, after playing those shows, it was like, okay, well, let's just write a fucking album. So that's might what, as and, well. And yeah, that was the might goal. Might as well. Yeah. yeah. Might as well do that. And so we he lived in Santa Rosa, and I lived in Ukiah. And we would meet up and have like th maybe three songs or something like that that we would work on at a time. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of those was definitely gone. I remember that being one of the ones. 
and then well, yeah. possibly obsession. I remember, I remember you lived in Willits, and I came to your place. Oh yeah, and I, you had so the way all this started is that Carter would just because we didn't live in the same town. Like it wasn't terribly far away, but far enough that we weren't meeting up, you know, every single day. Yeah, and you guys busted out that album, honestly. I was like, wow. Well, it took longer than we it, took, it, took, it took a long time, longer. but if you think about how many times you guys were actually able to like, get together, it's crazy how it came together. Yeah. Well, he would just he would just text me, he whatever inspiration he had, he would and this is actually the bulk of the album with the exception of a few songs. But the first song started out like this um, for sure where he would just I'm looking for it right now. Yeah, he he would just have know. um an idea like a lyric in his head and he would just sing a melody and so he would just record on his phone and just uh voice memo and text here this me. says this says um hostage idea so this is like the first thing that i had for hostage oh i love it hold me close and i can pretend hold me close see that's not even the song this anymore. isn't even the I can pretend. Yeah. hold me close that's awesome. I don't even That's know so what awesome. that... That's so awesome. I do that in my car, and I'm not a singer. <laughs> I'll have melody ideas and just, like, record them up. So maybe I should send mine to Corey, too. Yeah. I got <laughs> you yeah. back. Okay, so... Okay. Well, so he would just send them, and then I would, I would extract the melody, right? I would just, like, write it out, and then I would just write a whole, you know, fucking track off of it that was just all insane. on the computer. You know, I would just do, like, uh, you know, mock drums and bass or whatever. And you were I was, living I would, here at the time, right? I was living, I was living off of oh, Bay yeah. Village in like Santa Rosa. So, yeah. I and so I just let's just tell him his address yeah. right now. Yeah. So I live no. San Diego. No. Yeah. Corey's phone it's now is San Diego. <laughs> is seven oh seven. Yeah. Okay. So let's get more into that then. Um, so I'm so intrigued by this. So you come up with a melody and then you send it to, like. Before we get back to how you even have these ideas of these melodies and these lyrics. You, um, when he sends those, you, how do you, like, I don't understand. How do you just come up with, what do you mean? Like, I just start making the, like, what? How do you do that? Well, what do you mean? Well, there's, there's how a, does this work? Within, within what I'm sending him, there's some sort of melody or some, some there's notes that he can pick out that and he can build a song off of. do you playing guitar right? first, or what do you? It's, it's almost always guitar. There's times where I, I start doing on a different instrument but and it's it's is, almost always guitar that could be a dope guide yeah for mm -hmm. you to just uh, and, uh, and then you take off and then so you come up with that music and then do you add on some more lyrics to that or are you sending yeah typically stuff? i'll only have like a small portion of the song sometimes i think in some cases I'll, i'd have like all three verses written in a chorus and then just send him like the core, the verse and the chorus to it, and he would write the rest of it. And you're, and but, you're not when you're writing those lyrics. Do you have some type of music playing, or are you just, you know, um, acoustically? Is that what you're saying? Sometimes, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I would send him like a, a thought for a bass line or a guitar line, but most of the times it was just like singing a verse and a chorus into my phone and then texting that. That to is him. so cool. And yeah. so for you, what is you know. I, I know how to <laughs> write some lyrics and I have my own creative process, but yeah. what is yours? Or um, I mean, you have it, a few. <laughs> dude, it comes in, it, it's, it comes in waves for me of like when I'm writing and when I'm not writing. Mm -hmm. And, t and this one kind of came like a tidal wave. Like this was, I, I, I think I wrote the Hostage majority. Or the, no, no, the no, album. no. The album. Okay. I think I wrote the majority of the lyrics within a, I don't know, four month time period. Mm -hmm. Um, wow. and then like, That's I haven't, I haven't, I've written like maybe two other songs, like all lyrics, whatever. I've written like maybe two other songs since the end of like this album or whatever. Yeah. But like, it's so, like when you put so much into something, you're kind of like, <laughs> it's like, it's like after going a 15 mile run, drained. you're just like, I'm not yeah. running anymore. And yeah. it's just, you know, and I, we're almost, and it hasn't even been out for that long, but I think we're, at that point where we're joking about like, okay, album number two. Yeah. You know, but I, immediately right after it's that same kind of mentality. It's like, well, yeah. Oh. And I feel like, I feel like any artist needs time to just like absorb more again and then like put that yeah. out again, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. So, and, and I really wanted to get back to like, I enjoy more, um, like figurative lyrics. Um, and I think with top shelf, I had like strayed away from that and was writing in a different style. Um, and I wanted to get more back into, um, like writing, like some of my bigger influences are like tool or AFI and they have these lyrics that are like, they don't necessarily specifically mean one thing. Like they can be interpreted in all sorts of different ways. Right. Because there's kind of a mystery behind them. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of wanted to get back to that style of writing, which is, I think my favorite. 
Um, and so, like I said, like really inspired, um, by life's events. Right. And like, so ended up writing like a bunch of these songs all at once and then having like just crazy ideas for them and singing them into my phone. Okay. So so going with, with what you just said, because these lyrics, I think I told you that I like, this is my favorite of your lyrics. Some of them my favorite. Yeah. Um, I don't know the song name, but against Burn the, the stream. Yes. <laughs> that that chorus is super cool to me because it can it's however you want it to be. Like when you listen to it, you can take it however you th- so but when yeah. what does it mean to you? Uh so Burn the Ships was Sing the lyrics real quick. Inspired the chorus. Um <laughs> Against the Stream we have arrived. Now we must burn the ships to survive. Yeah. That's so the <laughs> the chorus for that one to me is like um it's more of a statement about society or about like personal growth in like we kind of swim against the stream of like the mainstream right to find our ways and then once we get there um there's like this famous uh was he a Spanish sailor named Cortez and he landed in Mexico right this is crazy, yeah. <laughs> this is so, really crazy. <laughs> so he la- he landed yeah. with his crew of ships, right? He landed and went and was about to go to war. Um, I'm not, dude, maybe not quoting this exactly right, but the idea is that he parks his ships and he gets all of his men on the beach and he's like, okay, fuckers, go burn all of our ships. And the idea behind that is like, there's no, there's no choice of surrender, right? Like you can't retreat. Like you can't surrender because you're burning your ships Amazing. down so that you can't like... So that was kind of like the idea because I'd always been attracted to that story. So that was the idea behind That's Burning so Ships. Cool. So like going against the stream and getting finally getting to this place in life where you feel like good about yourself and like burn the ships because you're not fucking going back. You know, yeah. like you're going to move forward. That's awesome. I see so, and I never would have known. Like yeah. I just thought, I mean, I, I got the, you know, yeah, like we made it. and But psh, who would have known who's Cortez? Like yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. going, going along with like inspiration, Corey, what's your inspiration? Because he, he mentioned Tool, which I will have to Google them as well. Oh, as far as like, group, as far as <laughs> groups go or just like music just in music. general what what inspires you yeah um man just, i mean honestly everything um that's always such a funny question because uh it's always asked in such a nonchalant manner like it's, it's like oh here your influences you're like oh these are my favorite bands yeah um and i've just never been that person that i can just be like this is who influences me but i mean i, I guess as far as I, I played like all kinds of rock music where they're like blues rock or hard rock or whatever from a kid on guitar. And so that always kind of influenced me. Um, and was so there music that you were listening to when you were creating this album, like a lot, cause I know that's the case for me. Like to be honest, while we were like creating yeah, it, yeah. I was listening to like three CDs, you know, I like, was, I was actually albums. ironically listening. Well, I don't know if it's ironic, but, uh, I was listening to, uh, a lot of classical music at the time because I was oh, in school. In school. And oh. so I was, and w- which was, I think for me, it was really cool for the album. Dude. Yeah. I think that and totally makes sense. Yeah. Let's talk about the fact that you wrote not just the guitar. Well, instrumentally, I, well, I don't like to say I wrote everything because I, 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 I wrote all the music, but it, it was a lot of back and forth. So like Carter would send me this lyric, I would extract the melody like we were talking about, write a chord progression, record this mock demo of instruments and send it back to him and be like, what do you think? And he'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool, but why don't you try this or that? And then I would take it and do what he said and then maybe do some more, some less. So, uh, you know, I mean, but yeah, like I, I, I ended up like charting out all of the instruments. All the instruments, that's mm-hmm. crazy. Just the, and, and you, and you kind of know instruments too, so you can. Oh, uh, barely. Really? <laughs> yeah. No? Okay. So yeah, I know. Do Corey, I throw Corey, barely. Corey, yeah. <laughs> okay, Thanks, Corey, Paige. You need to take more of the credit for instrumentation. Come on. Like, you like you're you're you definitely the whole, you're wrote the whole it. voice you're the whole you know i mean lyrics you know you're yeah. on, you're in the background a little bit yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah yeah and then you're you literally you're the drums you're the guitar you're the bass like and and not even it you know i know you guys had other people play some of those instruments right within the album but so the only so we had daryl daryl brown daryl brown uh, brown daryl brown and his hot dog boys hot <laughs> <laughs> they came. They came and did all the drums. Darryl, the he's gonna understand that joke if he sees this. So, um, he 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 was the only person. Well, I guess with the exception of a few singers, we had um, out of yeah. us that recorded an instrument. So, we we 
went out to Russian River Studios in Ukiah, and uh, it was a super funny, crazy, sleep-deprived uh, experience because I was moving down to San Diego because I was transferring to school, and we had to get everything tracked before I was leaving her. That was our goal. And so Daryl, who's an amazing drummer, um, you know, I sent him, I charted out everything, I sent him the charts, and he flew up. So like, that means that you wrote down, like, all the drum parts. I notated the drum parts, yeah. Whoa. And because That's everything, the shit everything that I don't was know anything about, settled, right? You know? Like yeah. he hands me those, and I'm like, "This is it's fucking just, it's Chinese." Genius, yeah. You're all next. Yeah. <laughs> Who's um, that? F right yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> play that. Sure. Yeah. Play the F on the drums. Yeah. <laughs> you can. technically could actually. But anyways, <laughs> um, so he it, he flies up. He he played a gig or something the night before and didn't go to bed. He flies early morning. I pick him up from San Francisco. We drive straight to. Uh, Russian River Studios, and um, he just sits there with an iPad, and we recorded all of, I played all the bass, so we recorded all the bass and drums in one weekend, it was like two days, yep. and he literally sight read the entire project, it was like the craziest thing I've ever seen. What does sight read mean? So He didn't know the songs. He didn't know the songs, yeah. Oh, he oh, just oh looked, so on site, he's reading the notes. He like, yeah, he yeah. like looked at his iPad and was like, okay, this is what it says I should be playing, right. oh, wow. and like recorded yeah. the whole album like that. Yeah. So it'd be like if somebody gave you a thing of notation and they you're like sing this right now. And yeah, you're like, and you're like, oh, okay. I don't even like I don't spot, even know how yeah. this is supposed to go. Well, let's just do so, it. Right. So it was. He it had was, listened to like a demo that him and I created, uh, like before we went into actually recording the songs. We spent time mm-hmm. here and um, at your home, like. Yep. Yeah, recording and was, them ourselves and kind of messing with the idea of the song, knowing that we wanted to have like a really good outline of what we wanted to do when we took that into the studio mm-hmm. so that we could give it to somebody like that and be like, this is the song, this is what we want you to play. Right. And, and one of the funny thing too is that a lot of the songs had been changed. And if you, if, so one of the songs, Fire Away, is the first uh, track off the album. There's this like epic drum solo. In, in the song. And insert I, song here. Insert song here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pause. Anyway. Play the song. Yeah. Okay, did you listen to the solo? We're back. <laughs> so, um, he and I had, I had like uh, r- wrote out these specific like rhythmic hits that I wanted him to hit in between. Everything I did was like very, very specific, you know, which was probably annoying for him, but he killed it. And I just remember that he, what did he say? He was like, we finished. I, it took more takes than the other songs because it wasn't easy. And we finally got the solo down. And he just gets up and he throws his six downs and he's like, yeah, nice job, asshole. And I, play, <laughs> and I was like, yes, I, awesome. I was like, I gave him a challenge. I feel good. Yeah, what, what's like a typical um, session for you guys? It's, um, like recording. Like what's, I don't know, you know, what's your vibe? Well, do, you, you, do you know, where do you record? Do you record here mostly or? So right now yeah. we're, we're in Sebastopol, California at um, Threshold Studios. Um, which is owned by Corey's father, and we did a we did maybe we did a lot here, maybe half. Yeah, here um, I think I recorded all my vocals in the next in the uh, isolation room right there. We did all the um, bass and drums in Ukiah, and all then bass we and drums did in Ukiah. basically everything else here, right? Yeah. I mean, I think Andrew did a lot of here our engineer you, did a lot of mixing. Are you late night guys? Are you up all night doing this? Or do you have snacks? Like, no, you know, we're typical. We're no. typical nine to fivers. I think the yeah. people that we work with, like our engineers, kind of determine that as well. And our engineer for this album was Andrew Miller, and he was definitely like a nine to fiver. He's yeah. like, I yeah, want to work like, eight hours a chunk at right, a time. And yeah. and I want to like give my ears a rest and then I want to come back fresh. Like, and so, well, and the funny thing was, about that is it, because, and we don't like to stay up in general. It's like kind of ironic. Oh, guy in a rock band, you don't like to stay up and party. We're kind of like, we play a gig and it's like bedtime. How fast can we make it to bed? Let's go. But it's funny because together. yeah, it's together. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Don't give away the We're secrets. We're not that kind of party. Yeah. <laughs> well, it depends. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Some people would say. <laughs> um, Anyways. No, so the funny thing was that we, we didn't like to do like late recording sessions. And when I was, we had finished everything. And the night before I, I was moving to San Diego, I had my car loaded. I was driving down there. And um, Andrew is here and we're doing um, a session to get some last guitar parts. And he's like, oh, and you know, some of these rhythm guitar parts on the song just doesn't sound quite right. Ugh. And he's like, let's mess with this. And he would always fucking do that, man. So we'd redo a bunch of <laughs> shit. But he was always right because it came out great. And so, oh, yeah, um, so we fi- we got this like tone on uh, my guitar pedal. And he's like, that is it right there. He's like, 
we recorded the song. So I forgot what song it was, but we redid it. And it's like the distortion. The Burn um, the Ships? I think it was like, yeah, one of those songs. But what's funny about it, this was at 11 p.m. I was supposed to leave really early the next day. We redo for one song the distorted rhythm guitar. And he's like, you want to just redo the whole album right now? And I was like, fuck. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we did, we, yeah. from, oh, from like 11 Started to, over. in, I don't know, two or three in the morning. Fuck. We I just, I, I went through every single track. This is the last possible time of tracking. I went through every single track and redid all the distorted rhythm guitars and doubled them. Yeah. So we recorded every single one that I played over it because it makes it fuller. Wow. And, uh, Luckily, he's a pretty good guitar player, so yeah. it didn't take days. It took yeah. Like, I wish I knew what distorted hours. written, yeah. whatever you just said is, but it sounds well. I mean, it's what you like... hear on the album. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the guitar. At, at that point, it's like there's song. We, you know, you do a bunch of takes. Like you know, when you're recording, you do a bunch of takes of a song. So you've already done it a hundred times. So it shouldn't be hard to do it the hundred and first time to kind of just and, yeah. Yeah, take its motions and, after yeah, that. Yeah, and sometimes the hundred and first time is the best yet. You know? Yeah. So yeah. there we go. Okay, yeah. so um, for the album. You have to pick one favorite song, favorite song on the album, um, and why. Hmm. I know it's probably hard, but there's probably one that you enjoy the most. You get in your car, and that's the one you're going to listen to. That's the first one you're going to play for people. I that's think that it, so it kind it changes for me, yeah, for sure. That's what I was going to say. Okay. Like sometimes, like yeah. at the beginning, it was definitely something different than it is now. In the beginning, what was it? Um. Well, you, you, in the beginning, uh, for a long time, Obsession was my favorite song. Yeah. Because it was all, I was all. You guys were obsessed with Obsession. uh, (laughs) And I think Breathe is your favorite now. Is Breathe? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it's Breathe. (laughs) That one. I've been really into Lost and Found a lot lately. Ooh. Um, I just like the changes in that song. I like, I like Hostage. Hostage. This one that's playing right now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is one of my favorites right now for sure. Can we just talk about the impeccable timing of? Oh, I like the song right here, and you turn it up right in the build up. It's like, it's like impeccable. Yeah, I, I agree. Like Fire when I was away, when turned I, out really good. The weekend. I thought definitely. Fire Away would be one of your guys' favorites. It definitely is. Well, the cool thing about Fire Away is it used to be called Outlaws. Huh. Oh, yeah. I feel like you played me that song. I don't know if I'm mistaken in your car. Like I'm sure at the beginning, like it was rough, rough draft. Okay. What was the song? So I was looking at my phone earlier. What was C major seven? Breathe. It really? Yeah. So that's what I didn't. Well, because I was. That was one of the ones that he. I don't think he wrote the lyric first. And so that was one of the few songs where I actually just wrote an instrumental track, and I sent it to him, and I didn't know what to title it. So this was us playing. So you guys do it that way as well. You'll come up with the music once in a while but it's, and then send it. It's only like a, way. yeah, but it, I think it was mostly the other method, but a few songs were like that. That was when I finally figured out the chorus. So this is us just getting together one time and like... Yeah, possibly. Yeah. yeah, that's just me and, sitting and in my living you, room. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. going to say, and you're just... just jamming out and come up with this and you're like wait this sounds good or, well yeah. yeah well what happened yeah basically i mean that that had been an instrumental track <laughs> me whistling shit yeah. i love it that's awesome oh yeah he's already getting the drums in there like he already knows <laughs> yeah it, well because we had an so instrumental this was track like a revision that. yeah of that because the funny thing about Breathe, Outlaws. right, it's like this, it's kind of like a, one of our softer rock songs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that the chorus fits that a lot. But the funny part about it is that that original instrumental track was, the verse was the same as kind of like really down tempo and chill. And then it went into this like thrasher, like. It was weird. It, this is super hard rock, like do, 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 you know? Yeah. And uh, we sat on that for a while and then, uh, but, you, you know, you couldn't put lyrics over it and so we were like are we gonna do a song where there's not really a chorus and it's just a verse and then these 
So one day I was, I think that's when I sent that recording. I finally just was just strumming chords. I was like, why am I making this complex? Yeah. Because sometimes you get ahead of yourself when you're writing music. Absolutely. And so then that, yeah. and, and then at that point, that's when I came up with the chorus for that. And so he that was, one he was, was pumped different. too. Cause I sent him that yeah. chord progression. He's like, okay. I think it was the next day. And you're like, oh, we got to come up. I got to come over and record some. this demo. He's like, I got something right now. You, yeah. You know. That's so yeah. cool. I remember writing it super late at night in my little composition book. Yeah. Um, I feel like a lot of people's favorite too, which I think <laughs> there's so much versi <laughs> versatility. Versatility. <laughs> yeah. Versa. There's so much verses. <laughs> there's so much verses. Versatility. <laughs> Yeah, you want to hold that the whole time? No, I don't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, there is so much versatility in the album. Like, I mean, like I said, I was just listening to it on the way here, and just like every song, I'm just like, it, they're so different, but they they do have the same, you know, sound ish. Like you can tell it's an album; it's cohesive. But mm -hmm. they're, it's just I'm like, how do? So the weekend, I feel like, is a lot of people's favorite song. Yeah, I mean, but I feel like you guys are like. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like artists, when they write music, like they have their favorite songs and then the fans have their favorite songs. I love I, The Weeknd. That's one of my favorite songs. I love songs The Weeknd for too. sure. Really? Oh, yep. hell yeah. I, yep. I, I, but it's also because... The Weeknd is I a I feel like I got a different vibe from you. Like. No, no, no. no. Oh, I, okay. I, uh, Never mind. Well, and a part of that too is... Well, for a while, I didn't like The Weeknd as much as other songs, but... You know, again, you go through phases, phases yeah. and but that's like the you know. summer song. Yeah. yeah. So what was it like recording that? Like were you guys just like having a blast? Like, what was it like? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. we're just running outside. We're while really, recording it. Like, Did yeah. you come up with that that the lyrics first and everything? The melody. I think, yeah, I think so. Yep. That yeah. Do you have Do you have more of these recordings? His, he had or? he yeah. had the verse. I think it was the verse lyrics first. So this one going back to outlaw or um, wait. Lost and Found was Outlaws. You guys Outlaws. are saying the original song titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Outlaws is... This is Outlaws, which was completely eventually fire turned into Fire Away. And where are you when you're doing this? Uh, Diving? Or either, like, yeah, in my car or like super late. Because like I have, I have a ton of recordings like that on my phone, which yeah. I would never play. So, <laughs> but but I'm always in my car like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, just, you got an idea, just record yeah. it, you know? Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to miss you tomorrow. Yeah, like, dude. Oh, so that shit. was the old... Well, yeah, thing. it's funny because you go back to those those little memos that he recorded, and the song obsession is com they're all completely different. They don't even sound like that anymore because you would send that and I'd be like, "Oh, cool, take this melody. Here's a chord progression. Send it back." Yeah. And then he'd be like, "Oh, this is great. I'm not going to sing that anymore. I'm going to sing this instead." So they don't. Get it. That's right. This that was the outlaws. That was the verse. Yeah. Yeah, and it was Crazy. the first for a long time, and, and we didn't like it for a long time because it, it was super high in his range and um, and just the way it fit with the rhythm. We loved the rhythm of the instruments, but we didn't like how the vocals were fitting over it. And then, um, and then one day he just rewrites the lyrics, or he rewrites the verse melody, and then he texts me and he's like, or he calls me, hey, I... I figured out how to fix uh, Outlaws. It's not called Outlaws anymore. It's called Fireway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> ah. okay. and, uh, that was like, the only one that was like sticking with me. Like, I didn't to do, do I my best and on that, that one. And that was near the you end know? of, like, like, like right before we really got in the studio because yeah, that was it was, it was almost minute. a completely different song. And yep. he and then he came over and it just sang it for me. And I was like, oh, that's fucking sick. <laughs> Say. So. Monday, that's what. That's what, the weekend, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a, That's your kid. That's your kid. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> I know that's you. Is it? I don't. <laughs> it sounds like a kid. Either way, hmm. we don't know. Let's just say that it's not me. Uh, that was terrible. Carter. Yeah. I mean, this probably. I, I feel like this has maybe like a little more to do with like rap music, not to plug myself. Ex rapper. Oh, uh, <laughs> not X. But not like X. Melody. We're gonna start working on your album next. <laughs> yeah. Melody first, or lyrics first, or like idea first, or does it oh. differ? Like I feel like times that I've had like a melody in my head first, sometimes the words are almost easier to come out, yeah. you know, because you know how you're gonna say them. Mm -hmm. A lot of these ones came together. At the same time, for me, like uh, 
I guess the melody would come first, and then yeah, and yeah, like singing that. like the lyrics with that. So you know, I, I've always wondered about that too, because I never write lyrics. Just, I just think more instrumentally. Yeah. Um, so. So yeah. So sometimes there there will be like some sort of melody that I'll like sing out, you know, like in my head. Um, and then find the words to that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes like I already have the words like written in my phone, um, and the melody comes afterwards. So like, it's, it's really either one. For Which me. song means, means the most to you lyrically Ooh. on this album? Yeah. Oh, um, I have to look at the songs. <laughs> that's I don't like, like no. Well, I was looking at the songs. I'm like, what song was I thinking? That's what it when you ask me, like, oh, what's your favorite song? You're like, wait, how many songs do you have? On this yeah, song? like, which, which ones are on this yeah. one? Um, well, I really like Gone. Um, because I think that like Gone was like it was one of the first songs that I wrote, and. It was like a exit from the like reggae rock world for me, mm. which is meaningful because for multiple reasons, but it was just like, oh, let's fucking put that shit behind us and let's use yeah. this as uh, aggression and like all this other stuff that has that is in gone as like our new way of like expressing ourselves and stuff. So, um, and I think that was a shared mentality for us. I because, was gonna say you yeah. were, you were exiting the reggae rock as well. Yeah, and it's and it's no it's no diss against reggae. I mean, we love yeah. we still listen to reggae you music still all the do, time. You still yeah. play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. exactly. But I, it's just I I think that uh, I know I speak for myself. I'm I'm, I'm pretty sure I speak for Carter too. But like we kind of grew up like little punk rockers, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And uh, me me more of like a pop you too? punk. Oh, yeah. 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 Lincoln Park, right? Lincoln Park. That's right. Oh, yeah, 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 dude. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's sick. Yeah. yeah. But it was, you know, and it was nothing against reggae. It was we we just kind of wanted to go back to what Wait, our roots were. Exactly. Was, yeah. you know, and well, and when you do I, I was I was in Top Shell for 13 years time, or something yeah. like that before we started doing this project. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. and not to say that we didn't write rock songs in top shelf because we definitely did and we came from top shelf originally started as being like a punk rock reggae band yeah like we were doing a lot of those things combined um and we grew more away from that and into the more reggae scene and so just like anything you've done for that long it's like refreshing and nice to mm -hmm. do something else mm -hmm. um and so that's really what that that meant to me and it was like we didn't, we aren't known as Volt. And so we didn't have any, anything to lose. Right. Yeah. yeah. So the freedom that yeah. came with writing these songs in terms of like, I don't really give a fuck who hears it freedom. or what happens right. freedom or like so nice. if this person's going to like it or if it's going to be on the radio or if it's going to get us on this tour or whatever, it was just like this. Yeah. Like, and I think, I think that's a part of what, in, in my opinion, made it so great. And it's not to like, to our own horn, but like I, I love I mean I love the way everything turned out I, like I haven't been you know I don't think I've ever been this proud of an album that we've I have produced never been this proud and, of an album either yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a major part of it yeah yeah pretty much no, keep going, keep going. <laughs> well I mean just basically that it, it, I think just kind of letting go of potential expectations made it a lot easier to yeah. just kind of yeah. do whatever do what we wanted. Do what you guys want to do, the right. sound you want to make, exactly how you want to do it. You can redo it as many times. You you guys had all of the freedom. Well, because for a long time in And it was shelf, just yeah. us. Just it us, It was just yeah. us. That and was nice, too. you don't have to go too. off other people's opinions. I don't know, mm -hmm. it's just you guys. And you guys, yeah. like, work really well together, like you said. Well, and after a while, when you build, you know, like in Top Shelf, I, I wasn't with Top Shelf in the beginning. I, like we talked about earlier, I joined later, but you know there was already a fan base that was established. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like you know you don't want to. At that time, we're trying to be successful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that I was. I, I don't want to speak for everyone else in that band, but I know for me, it was like you know I, I really wanted the band to be successful. I want to play bigger shows, and so I always think about how do we tap this market, you know, and like how do we write music? Yeah, that, that stuff caters creeps to that, in. You know? Yeah, and I was doing all of the management and booking and everything that came along with like keeping this band alive, going strong, whatever, you mm -hmm. know? And so that was totally weighing on me, like after that many years of doing that and also trying to be the singer, the artist, the writer, the whatever. Oh, it's yeah. just too much. You know what I mean? Handle. And so it was just like, 
refreshing, really refreshing that, to like it, release that, like, all that and just get back to like writing music and like mm-hmm. making it. What you guys as as just said like super inspired me because yeah, it's like all the time I was doing music, it's like other people are always just telling me what they want me to sound like or what other people want me to sound like or we should do this, we should do that. Yeah. And it's just like, it like corrupts your head. And it's like, yeah. this is fucking my creative yeah. process well, it up fucks with right you. now. Yeah. It fucks with it's you. supposed yeah. to be the other way around. Like right. the songs Completely. I record in my room by myself on my shitty ass like microphone are my favorite songs. Yeah. And it's, yeah. So you guys got to do that and that's super dope. Well, I mm-hmm. think we just, we, we just had this agreement even without really saying much, but it was just like, we don't care about the success of it. Mm-hmm. You know, we just care about, we want to write music that when we're driving by ourselves in our cars and listen to our stereos, we listen to, we'd listen to our own shit and just be like, that's fucking awesome. You right. Know? And so, right. yeah, we definitely didn't yeah. write this for anybody. Yeah. yeah. No, that's amazing. <laughs> It was like, no, yeah. yeah you wanna, and it was well, like, you don't, you, you I think at this point, <laughs> I know what you're going to say already. That was the joke. For I a think long at this period. point though, it's like, it, we're going to, we're going to write the best album that we can for ourselves. And if it fucking gets us somewhere or something happens with it, then that's meant to be. And that's great. Mm-hmm. And if not, then we're stoked because we wrote this fucking sick album. That, that you love. guys love. Right. Yeah.